what is the calendar of the solar aeons and how specifically is it understood? <clears throat> the calendar of the solar aeons may be understood one of two ways, either purely by adhering to the actual portions of the ecliptic occupied by each zodiac sign, as these each differ from every other, even if only slightly, or else ideally by considering each of the 12 zodiac signs to occupy a span of 30 degrees on a perfectly circular 360 degree ecliptic plane. Thus, 12 times 30 equals 360. Assuming it makes no difference to this description which one we use, we may choose the idealist over the purest model for now, as the idealist model is easier to work with. In the ideal model of a calendar based on this method of measuring the 360 degree in the ideal model of a calendar based on this method of measuring the 12 signs of the zodiac as spans of 30 degrees each we find this to be very nearly identical to measuring the 360 degree circle as alike the 365 day year in the resulting model for a calendar corresponding essentially to the ancient egyptian civic solar calendar model each month is 30 days the extra five days were celebrated as the heru renpet holidays at the two equinoxes two solstices and one annual New Year's Eve dates. The model of the calendar of months counts the order of the 12 zodiac signs as they rise on the horizon at dawn over the year. Such megalithic monuments as Stonehenge seem to have been built to measure such phenomena. The model of the calendar of the aeons counts the order of the 12 zodiac signs as they rise on the horizon at dawn over the thousands of years. Due to precession of the Earth's 23.5 degree axial tilt around true north, each of the 12 zodiac signs will rise on the horizon at dawn on the same days of the year for roughly 2,000 years before they roll over into the next aeonic month. So ideally, each month of 30 days per annual calendar round may be seen as roughly equivalent to an aeon of 2,000 years per 30 degrees per aeonic calendar round. The precession of the 12 zodiac signs around the calendar of the solar aeons is opposite that during an annual orbit. Say you take an idealized square day-by-day -day calendar with each month being 30 days and you arrange its pages so that they form a circle. This is the calendar round. Now, if one progresses monthly around this circle in one direction, say clockwise, one will progress around the same circle in the opposite direction, in this case counterclockwise, if measuring the spans of 30-day months as aeons of 2,000 years apiece. This effect occurs due to the axial pole of the planet Earth precessing east to west very gradually, while the Earth rotates daily west to east. The POD has various examples of solar aeon calendar systems, including the Lemurian, the Pythagorean version proper, and the Atlantean, each a varying degree of complexity. All these aeonic calendars of the POD are calibrated the same, to be read as if looking east along the equator at dawn on the winter solstice 
and oriented to depict the ruling planets as of the year nominal zero on the current calendar of BC and AD dating eras. As such, the nadir point of each calendar round in the POD, depicting an aeonic cycle, occurs between the zodiac signs of Cancer and Gemini, with the moon ruling Cancer and the sun ruling Gemini. Because these are the rising signs on the horizon at dawn on the winter solstice during these different periods of time. On this model, we are already now leaving the aeon when the ruling signs are Gemini in winter, Pisces in spring, Sagittarius in summer, and Virgo in autumn, and entering a new aeon when the ruling signs are Taurus in winter, Aquarius in spring, Scorpio in summer, and Leo in autumn. These will now be the ruling signs for the next around 2,000 years or so. The purpose of keeping long counts of dates spanning thousands of years is more than just as a mnemonic for remembering history, though it helps. It is for remembering our current place in the planet's ice age cycle. For example, the eon we are entering into now, governed by Taurus in winter, is actually in the early to mid-autumn of the Ice Age cycle's 48,000-year-long span for the North Hemisphere, equivalent to early to mid-spring in the South Hemisphere. This means the glaciers will begin thawing over Antarctica and begin forming over the North Pole, likely Siberia, gradually over the next 6,000 to 12,000 years or so. Such are the seasons on the calendar of aeons. <laughs>